In this movie, we'll take all of the sound categories that we've examined so far and assemble them together into a handy chart that will show all the consonants of English with their IPA representations. As we covered in the last few movies, consonants are classified in terms of place and manner of articulation. The place designations we discussed, from furthest front in the mouth to furthest back, are bilabial, labiodental, interdental, alveolar, alveopalatal, which can also be called postalveolar, palatal, velar, and glottal. The manner categories we introduced were stop, tap, nasal, glide, fricative, affricate, and liquid. Now you can see how these two characteristics lay out very nicely into a two-dimensional grid. But you'll also recall that there's a third property that we discussed that's relevant for consonants, voicing. Since there's a third dimension in which consonants can differ, we should have a consistent way to represent that dimension. And we do. As with many things in phonetics, we've established a convention that everyone uses to represent voicing when listing consonants that have otherwise identical specifications. The convention is that we list the voiceless consonant first. So, in this chart, whenever there are two consonants in a square, the first one will always be voiceless, and the second one will always be voiced. Now, as we fill in this chart, you'll notice that all of the symbols we've been discussing have a place. The chart does a really nice job of organizing all of the consonant sounds of English. The only sound that requires a little bit more explanation, really, is er. As we mentioned in an earlier movie, er is a liquid, so it clearly belongs in this row. However, what place er is produced at is a complex question. For now, I've placed it with the palatal sounds, and this is fairly frequent. You'll see other consonant charts that list this sound at other places of articulation. And in fact, the tongue position for er is such that a few different places of articulation really do make sense. It's a complex sound, and we'll talk about it in more detail later in the course. For now, though, just remember that it's a rhotic liquid, and I won't ever ask you the place of articulation for er on a test. This complete chart is a primary tool in phonetics. You should study it, learn it, and memorize it. You can expect that you'll have to fill in a blank consonant chart at some point this quarter. These concepts of place, manner, and voicing are basic to the understanding of nearly everything else we do in the field of phonetics. If there's one thing to learn like the back of your hand, it's this.